Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History for an episode of Just for Fun, a little series that I run on the channel when I want to do something just for fun. And today, just for fun, I want to share with you a recipe that I made the other day for dinner for real. I really made this recipe and I want to share it with you because come on, who doesn't want to dine like Edith Head? Here we go. Edith Head's own recipe for chicken and potatoes casa la gira. Oh, it's great. So the other day I had to look something up as I was doing some research for another episode on the ultimate fashion history and I got out my big and beautiful book on Edith Head by Jay Jorgensen and there it is I'm modeling it for you on some living room cushions I love this book it is gorgeous and it has everything you need to know about Edith Head it's not that expensive. It's about 50 bucks on Amazon. I've had it for years, but obviously it's still in print. And it is full of her sketches, wonderful photographs where you can really see the details. Great pictures of Edith herself. Production notes, letters. It's fantastic. So, as always, I got sucked into the book. And I got really sucked into this chapter, the chapter about Casa Ladira, Edith Head's home that she shared with her artist and art director husband. This Spanish revival style home that had once belonged to Betty Davis and then later would belong to Carrie Fisher. Let me just zoom in on this picture so you can see Edith at home in this fabulous Aztec revival number. I think I talk about the Aztec revival in another episode on the ultimate fashion history, don't I? I can't remember which. Here is a great picture of Edith doing something domestic. And look at the way all of this Mexican pottery is arranged. But here's the thing, whoever bought the house before Carrie Fisher must have kept everything exactly as it was in this room because Carrie Fisher kept everything the way it was in this room as well. This picture comes from an article about Carrie Fisher at home. So in this chapter, I was quite excited to see that there was Edith Head's self-created famous recipe for chicken and potatoes casa la gira. I needed something to cook for dinner on Friday night and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. Chicken, potatoes and chicken livers which I'd never cooked before. I was very scared, but I was quite brave. And given who created and served this recipe, I thought it might be great to share it with you guys. I then found another version of this recipe online. This is obviously culled from an old magazine or cookbook. I don't know which, Chicken Casa Ladera, Edith Head, there she is. But this recipe is a little bit different. Instead of chicken livers, there are pitted black olives. So perhaps if you don't like chicken liver, you could substitute for olives here. Instead of cognac, there's sherry, but the rest of it is more or less the same. But I'm going with the original recipe, or <laughs> original to me, the one in the book, with a couple of substitutions of my own. Now, don't worry about writing all of the ingredients down or writing the recipe down, because you can always drop me an email and I will send you a photograph of the page, okay? So this is what you need. Chicken pieces, any kind of chicken pieces. I used thighs. Chicken livers, yes. If you haven't cooked them before, it seems daunting, but it's so easy. Dry white wine, brandy, cognac, it's the same thing, right? Lovely salted butter. Chicken broth, you can make your own, but why bother? I always use this brand, better than Bouillon. It's fantastic. Small mushrooms. If you can't find those little button mushrooms, you can use sliced mushrooms. Now, cherry tomatoes can be used. I didn't use them because I didn't really like them. Olives, if you're substituting the chicken livers for olives. And instead of using cherry tomatoes or black olives, I used dry apricots. Although next time I make it, I'm going to use dry figs. 
You need a lot of paprika and salt and pepper, of course, for your potatoes. Use potatoes. Now, in the book, they talk about rice potatoes, basically the potatoes that you push through a potato ricer. I don't have one, so I did a kind of chunky mashed potato. And you will also need a little bit of flour and some cress or alfalfa or parsley for garnish. Now, when I started this episode, my idea was to photograph every single step in my own kitchen, like one of those real food bloggers. I soon gave up on that idea. I got into such a flap, such a kerfuffle, but I did start with some original photos. So the first thing you need to do is peel, dice, and boil your potatoes. You'll need those later. Then season your chicken bits with salt, pepper, and a lot more paprika than you see here. I ended up adding a bunch. What you want to do is brown the skins until they turn lovely and golden like this. Then remove chicken from pan and place in a baking dish or a casserole. Do not discard butters and juices and lovely brown bits from the pan because we'll be needing those later. And I forgot to tell you, yeah, you're supposed to brown the chicken in a few tablespoons of butter. I added a little bit of olive oil too. Okay, so imagine that that is the pan or skillet or casserole that we use to cook the chicken. Come on, people, work with me. So at the bottom, we've got all of that bubbling butter and those little bits of chicken, but no chicken. We've removed that to the casserole or baking tray already. So what you want to do now is add to whatever is left in that pan your half cup of chicken broth, half a cup of white wine, and just stir it around on a medium heat. Then you mix the cognac, I used about half a cup, with three tablespoons of flour until you get a paste. Then add it to that broth and wine mixture in the pan and bring to a boil for about three minutes. Then pour all of that liquid over the chicken in the baking dish, cover, and cook on 350 for 30 minutes. Now the scary bit, well it was scary for me because I had never cooked chicken livers. Pull the membranes and weird fatty bits from the chicken livers with your hands or get someone else to do it. Actually it was pretty easy, they were so slimy you could really detect any grisly bit or membrane bit and it just comes away very easily. Then you dredge the livers in seasoned flour and then saute them with a bit more butter or a drop of extra olive oil in the original pan. It takes about five minutes and then you set the liver aside. Then in the same pan, fry your mushrooms until they're all lovely and golden. Again, you might have to add a little bit of extra butter or a little bit of extra olive oil. Then you add your mushrooms, livers, and chopped dried figs, that's my take on the recipe, to the chicken in the baking dish, cover, and cook it for an additional 15 minutes. While that is cooking, rice or mash your potatoes with butter and salt and pepper. I add a little nutmeg to my mashed potatoes, but I don't do this to them. Don't get me started on Dreyfus. After that final 15 minutes of cooking, so your chicken is cooking for 45 minutes in total, pile your mashed potato or rice potato into a serving dish. I think you could use regular rice as well if you wanted to. Pile your lovely gooey chicken and mushroom and chicken liver and fig concoction. You can see I used apricots here into the center of the serving bowl and then top it with a big bunch of alfalfa or cress or parsley. Is this what it is supposed to look like? I don't know. There wasn't a picture of this. I was working blind, but it did look very pretty and it tasted delicious. I will definitely be making this again. It was a huge hit in my household.